Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at gussets such as these and how to create them in FreeCAD. We're going to take two approaches for this one. The simple approach and a more complex approach such as this but very fast and we're going to use a single sketch and use a duplicate of it in this instance and learn how to reorientate the sketch onto another face. And that's via the sketch and if we look down here, we've got the reorientate sketch option here. So we're going to learn how to use that. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. And let's have a look how we would do this. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So to create a simple gusset, we would use something like the part design. Let's create a simple part in here. Create a new body, new sketch, and let's go on the XZ plane doesn't matter which plane. And I'm just going to create an L-shaped bracket using the polyline. Come down to the top, into the center, and we're just going to sketch something very simple like this. And we'll add some constraints to this. Let's hit Escape, and Escape again to get the mouse pointer back, and use a horizontal constraint on that one. I'm going to take these two, and use the quality. Let's pull this back up and take these two and make those equal as well. Let's set a length in here of around about three millimeters and set this length, the height of 50 mil. So we've got this L shaped bracket in here will will become kind of a bracket let's close that and we're going to pad this now using the pad and we'll pad this around about 80 mil so we have this l shape obviously when we look at this the strength if we're placing load on here we need something in here to stop this from bending there's a number of ways of doing this one of the ways is by taking this face and creating a sketch. Now we can pull in some geometry. Let's pull in this point here. Well, I've pulled in that line, but it doesn't matter. And we hit the right mouse button or escape to get the mouse pointer back. And I can use the polyline again, this one here. And we'll just sketch in a triangle shape in here. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and use these two make them equal, and then we can set a length in here. It's up to you how long you want this. I can go 15 millimeters, and we've got this shape in here. Now, what we need to do is position this into the center. So this is a very simple gusset that we use. We'll create a more complex one in a moment where we use the sketch reorientation to take a copy of our sketch and reorientate it. So I'm gonna take this one now, this sketch here, and set the attachment because it's attached. We see the attachment is first. I've attached it to this face. And we'll set the position and the Z. Now this is 80 millimeters long, so I'm gonna go for 40. So it sits in the middle. And we need to use a minus 40. Bring that into the middle like so. And now what we do is take that sketch and we pad it. Now I'm gonna pad it by three millimeters. You notice this is padding from the middle outwards. If I hit symmetrical to plane, then that sits back in the middle. So there's a simple gusset that we can add. Obviously we could use a linear pattern across here if we wanted a number of them to reinforce this, but there's also another way. So if I okay that, we can see that gusset in there. Let's delete that pad and look at a different way where we're reorientating the sketch. I'm gonna delete the sketch as well. So I'm gonna use a loft between these two faces. So first of all, I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna make one sketch 
brand new sketch on that face. So you can see that sitting on that face there. And I'm not going to pull in any geometry. I'm going to use this point in here to constrain the geometry on this face. Because I don't want to constrain to any external geometry. I'm just going to do it to this center point. So let's use a slot in here. So I'm going to use a slot. And we'll set the slot, this one here, with a diameter of three mil. And set a height to 20 millimeters. So we've got that there, and that's lock this down to the center. So I know that this is 80 millimeters long. So I'm going to take this point, and let's come around here, and we can get this point. There it is there and use this point vertical distance 40 millimeters and we'll do the same with the height as well let's just come up to sketch and view section to hide that makes it easier and we can get to this point so we've got both those points selected and let's use a height in there of 20 mil let's bring that down a bit actually let's bring this down to 15. So we've got this sketch in here. What I want to do is create the same sketch on the other side. So let's close that. So we've got that there. Now for creating the same sketch, I'm going to duplicate the sketch, come up to edit and duplicate selected objects. The sketch is selected. Let's remove the pad so only the sketch is selected there. So we've got the square selection in that sketch. Let's hit OK. Let's duplicate that sketch now. Now I want to place it upon this face here. Now I can't just come in here and use the support and click on that. Well, let's click the map mode and select this face because it's not orientated in the correct plane. So we need to reorientate the sketch. So we click that sketch, come up to sketch and come down to reorientate sketch. Because this sketch is a duplicate of this one, it will be still connected to this. So a sketch with a support face cannot be reorientated. Do you want to detach it from its support? Click yes. And now we set the plane that we want it upon. And I want it upon this plane here, which is the X, Y plane, which is already selected in here because it's a default selection at the top. Let's hit OK. Now, if we look, let's put it in edit mode so it's placed it there let's close that we see the sketch is over here take the sketch select the sketch make sure it's selected and the map mode at the moment is flat face let's select that and now it's saying selecting and we can select the reference this one as you can see it's now over this side now this is where we have to reorientate this onto this face here. We could come down and use the round X, round Y, and the Z, X direction, etc. But if we just click on flip sides, then it will flip it the other way around. So it's just mirrored it over to the other side. So now we've got that connected to that face. Let's come up and hit OK. Now what we can do is take these two and just loft between these. So I'm going to select Sketch one, select sketch two, control select both of those, and then use the loft. So we've lofted across those. And what we've created now, if I hit OK, we created a support that goes across here for our gusset. The good thing about using an additive loft is that when we come in, we can actually edit these. So we could edit this sketch. And as long as we've got the same edges along there, the number of edges, then it will be the same on this side. So for instance, we could have a really interesting gusset in here. And let's delete some of this. And let's delete this one as well, horizontal. And we could bring this out, remove the equals. So we've got something like this and hit close. So we've got something a bit more interesting and something that can be used in a different application. Look at the top, you can see the gusset in there. 
So in this example, I have the sketch sitting here and I want to make a duplicate of this sketch. Now, if you notice this sketch, it's butted right up against this length here. So that's come up to the sketch view section so I can see that in there. And I can see how that's just sitting on the top there. Let's close that. So we've got this sketch here. And I want to mirror this basically across here. So first of all, we'll take the sketch and make a duplicate edit. Come down to the duplicate selected objects. Unclick the pad so we just got the sketch only as the sketch is selected in there and hit OK. We've made a duplicate of that sketch and now we're going to place it upon here. At the moment, it's still in the same place. It's still attached to the same face. We come up to the sketch and reorientate the sketch. We're going to place it upon this plane here. Detach it from the face. Let's hit yes. And look at the plane. So this is going to be the X, Y plane. So it's this plane here. Match it up with your handle in the right hand corner, X, Y, which is this one. OK, that. Close straight away because it's going to be sitting over here. And now we need to place this upon this face and we need to attach that to that face. So take that sketch, look at the map mode, it's flat face at the moment, select that. There's nothing in the attach, it's not attach. The selecting, he's saying selecting here, if it says reference one, hit selecting. Click this face, and then straight away hit OK. So at the moment, well, you can see it's over here. So we need to flip the sides. So let's click on that sketch again, and look at the map mode. If it's over here, then it's worthwhile. We're still in here. We really shouldn't have closed this, but it shows you whereabouts is. Hit the flip sides. So if this one's checked, then just uncheck it. If it's not checked, then check it. That's it in there. That's it. Okay. Now we should get a nice clean loft between these two, because basically it's mirrored across here, mirrored across this line. Take the first sketch and the second sketch. Control select those two. Go to part design, create an additive feature, and use the additive loft. Or we'll use it from the toolbar up here. That's what's going to happen. And that's hit OK. And now we've got our gusset in there. So we've taken a duplicate of our sketch, reorientated it, and now it's placed it upon this face here. And we've just lofted between those. So that's how to create gussets in FreeCAD and reorientate sketches. So it's quite useful when we're duplicating our geometry to use on other faces. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again in the new one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.